What is happening, y'all? Welcome on back. And it's time to go to our second region in earnest. This is the Lakes of Lyurnia. Uh, right over there is my favorite NPC, but before we talk to her, we gotta go pick something up. Now, because we already had this grace, uh, we just teleported here from the backside. But we're just gonna run in, because there's... So, running from Godric over to here, there's only one item to get. Uh, you can't really do anything in this place, but there is a Shabri Regrape. Now, you'll remember that we actually already have one of these from that NPC that we had killed earlier. So, right now, you should have two Shabri Regrapes. Uh, and there are three in particular that we need. The third one is going to come up a little bit later. But that is tied to the quest of the legendary Grape Lady. That you may have heard of in the Let's Play and the review of the game. Uh, eventually, she is going to get you a really cool seal that scales with like strength decks in and faith. So Hello. definitely worth going My through her quest line. And I'm journeying in search of the distant light. If I might be so anyway, any Shibiri grape, she wants a Shibiri grape. So go ahead and give her one. Now I can feel our most kindly the blessing. We get a cool emote for it. Uh, and that's it for her for now. So more steps with her a little bit later. Uh, we're going to go over here real fast. And the last time we visited this zone. For those that are just following the walkthrough for the first time, we came to this zone a good bit earlier and ran around and came a couple. We got a couple different graces. We got a merchant up here. This is where we turn in stuff. So I would suggest watching that Lyurnia loop episode we did because otherwise you're going to be like, why does he have all these graces? Uh, but over here we have Thops. Thops was the basic sorcery merchant. He has a quest, but we need to get a key item. So that quest isn't going to happen until later. So don't worry about him for now. Uh, we want to go in here. And we're going to grab this academy scroll. Do, 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 do. Grab the scroll. And we're going to go to Church of Vows. So we just got to run a bit until we're out of combat. Uh, now, there's a couple areas in the game that I'm still discovering that also have nighttime boss battles. One of them being the Master Shack. The other being the Church of Vows. Um, I didn't find that at all on my, my other two playthroughs, but occasionally you can come to the Church of Vows. Turtle Man won't be there, and instead there's a guy called Ball Bearing Hunter. He'll try and kill you. Um, you know, if he does, you'll just respawn right here, which actually, let's let's see if we can trigger him real fast. Uh, usually it's, it's during the wee hours of the night, so if you're here nighttime or between night and early morning, this guy will be here. And there's a couple places. This guy, you're going to run into this guy throughout the game. You have to kill him at a couple different spots. Uh, no, he's not here yet. So Turtle's still here. But yeah, if he is and you die, I mean, just respawn at the grace, pick up your stuff. Um, try to pass time. Eventually he'll go away. But go on over to this guy and we're going to give him uh, the scrolls that we have picked up until now. I'm going to talk briefly about some of these spells for my caster boys out there. Uh, so some of these are starting spells. Great Glintstone Shard is a little bit stronger than this guy. It's not bad for a single target, uh, but I think Arc is still better. Carry and Slicer, absolutely. This is the best damage to FP ratio sorcery in the entire game. I've done testing on all the spells. If you're if you're talking about what can I get the most damage for, for this has like a I think, like I maxed out. It's around like 141 damage to FP ratio. So for one FP, you're getting like that much damage out of it. Highly, highly, highly recommend this. It's also a absolute staple of uh, of um, spell sword builds. Carrying great sword is similar to this, but it's more of an AOE option. I wouldn't use it as much, but if you have stuff surrounding you, it's great. Uh, Glint blade. This is more. I think it's useful in PvP because uh, you're going to cast it up and it's going to be delayed, so you can cast it, run up on the person, and then it'll then come out. But this is also a, a decent spell sword option. Uh, Glintblade Phallix is okay, but there's better versions of this later. If you really want it for now, it's all right. Uh, but don't expect a ton of damage in PV, PvE out of it. Uh, as for incantations up until now, this guy sells this. If you want Black Flame, get it. Uh, Black Flame Blade is literal garbage. Uh, this spell lasts like 8 seconds, which is nothing for a weapon enchantment. Black Flame, it's not too bad, but it's it's also not that good. And we get Lightning Spear soon, which completely outclasses it in pretty much every way. So anyway, food for thought. Uh, but after talking to him, we are going to warp right on back to Lake Facing Cliffs. Oh, I forgot. There's a, there's a needle in the Church of Vows as well. Some people have pointed out there's a chest you can grab in there. It has the golden needle. That's pointless to us for the time being. Uh, but 
the golden needle is just unique in that when we go to alter garments, if we want to change a boss armor, you need to have the golden needle. So we're going to get it eventually, but right now it's irrelevant because we don't have boss armor. So we're going to head on over. Where are they at? There we are. We're going to go down the tombstones first. This one. And whether you want to do this on foot or on your horse is up to you. I feel a little bit more comfortable on the horse because if I mess up, I can be like, oh, and I can aim the, the double jump to make sure I land on it. Uh, but yeah, we're going to jump down the tombstones and then we're going to head on this way. Ah. Ah. That was a poor sad troll. Feel bad for this guy. Look, because he was he was carrying the carriage, but everyone else died, and now he's just stuck with this big old stake in his chest and nobody else. Alright, buddy, you know, I was gonna let you live, and then you decided you were gonna attack me. two charged heavies with heavy weapons will basically take these guys out. Put on the lantern. I wish it was... I, should have, I shouldn't have made it nighttime before I left. We get a grace in a little bit. Uh, so we've done the tombstones. We got the spear in the chest. Just briefly, just to look at that. Um, hang on a second. Let me go to order of acquisition. Which somebody told me about this on stream. Blew my mind. But if you push in the left stick, you can change the way things are sorted. Absolutely crazy. 150 hours in the game, just now learning this. Uh, but this has Sacred Order built in. It's a pretty decent spear. It's a great spear as well, which I think are better than regular spears. So if you're a spear person, this one's all right. Uh, but so looking at the map, we're going to talk about where we are going next. Uh, so we're going to be going along this path. And right here, you can see some structures. These are ruins. We're going to be heading on over to there. Uh, there's the Cuckoo Glintstone, another Shabriri, and a plus five Faith Talisman. Uh, from there, we're going to head to a secondary portion right here along the shore. That's the second part of the Great Lady quest. And then we're going to head up to right around here for a grace. So let's go hit those points now. I know a lot of people have been asking me for, to keep the map up longer. Uh, the main thing is when I, when I go here and I mark... That's what I would suggest you marking as well, because we're not going to be looking at the map a ton, but, uh, you know, those those marks are, are pretty easy opportunities to do that. Grab this grace, and I'm going to make it daytime just so we can see a bit better. There are some nighttime bosses here, but we are not worried about that for this particular second. We're, we are going to hit one this episode. Uh, in general, at this point, we're, we are... Um, at this point, you should be strong enough that for the most part, anytime you run into a nighttime boss, you'll be able to tackle it at this point in the game. You won't need to worry about, you know, at the start, I, I saved a lot of them until later. Um, that's not going to be a concern anymore. We should be, we should have a pretty healthy uh, amount of health. You should have more than enough of your main stat to meet stat requirements at this point. Be careful with these guys. These guys can malfunction and I'll, I'm going to try and hit one to... So you, they'll, you can see how they start kind of spasming out after they've been hit. Uh, firing arrows all over and whatnot. You let them get too close to you, they'll do like eight hits within two seconds and you're dead. So yeah, we're coming up to our first ruins, putrefied ruins. A couple different things here. Nothing that's like really of a, you know, of major threat here. So just kind of go through, kill stuff as you see it. couple different night type dudes. We're just going to try and group them all up. I 
You can see this is why I like this area um, as our second area, because most of the things here we are killing in you know two swings. And this is what we need. Break that open. Up this. And we got our two fingers heirloom and a shibri regrape. Now the two fingers heirloom is pretty nice. It's going to add five to faith. So early on it can help you meet those uh, spell requirements that you might have. And even for non-faith people, what I really like about stuff like that is there are a couple pieces of gear in the game, uh, mainly talismans and on certain helmets where the, the gear might give you stuff. Like this is going to give us some intelligence. So if you ever want to try something out and you don't have the requirements for it, Try putting on the talisman that's going to boost that stat, as well as a helmet that's going to boost that stat. And you might get enough of the requirements needed to be able to put that item. Now, while Grape Lady is over here again, there's also lobsters, and those lobsters are deadly. Oh, well, I don't know. They might be are they crawfish or lobsters. I don't know. Either way, be very cautious with them. They can, uh, they can do a lot of damage up front, like the giant crabs, and their water spit is deadly. You are most kind. May the blessing so as long as you get the, you know, you are most kind, you've completed that portion. You've given her the second Shabriri gate, and she is now moving to the third spot, which, uh, for those trying to advance it, it's like way... Uh, it's like up here. Or up here, up here-ish. But we're not going there for quite some time, so don't worry about it. Uh, there's one item right in here that I remember passing by. Yeah, this mushrooms but so now we're just kind of heading northeast and you can see where the markers at there's a teleporter here don't use that that's gonna take us uh, well I'll show you on the map once I'm out of combat here should be another grace right around here here we go so that is gonna take us right back here to the South Rea uh, Lucaria gate which, obviously, we're not trying to go there for the time being, which is why I said not to take it. Uh, but we got the teleporter, we got the grace. Um, yeah, let's do this part first. So there's like a little battle that's going to happen here. A bunch of stuff is going to summon up. I would suggest just grabbing the loot and running through. Um, you know, there's, there's a couple different loots on the ground, but you don't get anything for, for murdering everybody here. These guys are, are part of like the the Carrion Academy stuff, which I guess to give you a little bit of lore, um, you know, at one point the Academy rebelled against the Royal Family, and so the Royal Family had guards, and that's kind of all the fighting that's going on in this region. But so this path that we're running through right now, there's going to be a Knight Rider here, we're going to kill him, or try to kill him in a second. Um, melee builds should do fine at this point, Mage builds might struggle a little bit, so if you're struggling, don't worry about it. You get the Ice Spear Ash of War, which is, I mean, kind of inconsequential, but whatever, it's cool. Um, but yeah, I want, I want to stress that on any of these world bosses, you know, I had a lot of people that were like, I can't beat the dragon right now, what do I do? If you are fighting any world boss, whether it is a Death Bird, or a Knight Rider, or a dragon, or whatever the case is, they are always there. Night bosses do, they don't, they don't, you know, ever disappear with the exception of, um, Later in the game, over here in the capital, there's, there are some events that happen at the very end of the game, which will change the capital itself. And at that point, anything you missed in the capital is gone. But obviously, we're going to make that extremely clear before that happens. And that is, honestly, that's so far away, you shouldn't even worry about it for the time being. But so, yeah, any of these church bosses you fit, or, or any of these dungeons that we go in, like, if you're like, oh, I missed that dungeon, or, oh, I, you know, I can't beat that guy right now, just come back later. You know, you, there's nothing that you have to do when I'm doing it. This is just the order that, that I found to be uh, the most effective and easiest. So melee builds, you got this down. Just, you know, run up, charge attacks. Obviously, if you can get a good hit that hits him and the horse, that's a bonus. Yeah, 
know, Mage, Mage might struggle with this because casting on horseback, honestly, I think is a little janky. And on top of that, um, you know, your weapon is, is usually like a rapier or something. Though Moonveil might, might make this dude a bit easier. Um, real fast, just to show one thing for mages, if you're really stuck on this guy, you can actually cheese this guy. And I'll show that very quickly. So if we just run on over here, you know, the, the grace we got is right there. Just run a little bit, and this guy should despawn after you get a little ways away. You can see now he's faded away. And his health will actually stay where it was at. So if you're a mage, this is probably your best bet to kill him. This is what I had to do with the mage. Uh, you run on back, and now, while he's not paying attention, you get off another rock sling and boop him in the face. Melee builds, obviously, that's not a concern. Just, you know... Get on your horse and, and whoop ass like we are. Watch out for the bear. Want more? Lucky that, he, that bear saved his ass. I was about to get the, the juicy critical on his face. Stop, bro. I'm tired of his jumping around. So yeah, you'll get some souls. You'll get ice spear. Uh, after this, we're gonna go back to Highway North. And we're going to go east for a Sombering Stone 2. And then we're going to go to Cliff Bottom Catacombs. Make it daytime again. Now this next part is actually something I forgot in the initial recording. So I'm adding it in right here. We're just going to snag this real fast and then uh, get back to the original recording, but there's a tower right over here. We're going to run over there and grab two quick loots. In general, if I miss something, um, the video isn't live, I can just go back and edit it in like this, but once stuff goes live, you know, it's just something I'll cover in a later episode. We got a rune, and then we go this way. We should have a Flintstone cookbook right here. Let me climb up here. And there's a dude we can kill and a staff we can grab. Um, now this staff isn't going to be better than the meteorite staff I've already suggested you use if you're a mage. This staff can get better. But you need to be around uh, level 13 on it uh, for it to it to scale better but one thing that's interesting is it does boost glimplate sorcery so you know worth a mention uh, but anyway after you get that it's gonna warp on back and then I'll let the original episode continue from here so in particular you can kind of see there's a path right here and these are the well let me remark these we'll go we want to go here and then we want to go here so, the easiest way is just look at the compass at the top of the screen, and we're just heading directly east. And once you start seeing the, the cliff side, you know you're in the right spot. There's a couple beast men around here who will try and attack you. You can just run past them. They're, they're inconsequential. They don't, you know, they, and they jump out, try to hit. we have got to worry about them, though. Kill them if you want. Not really a concern.
Those poison traps, don't really worry about them. We're about to be at a gray site anyway. And then I would just run along the cliff with the cliff on your left hand side. And it's kind of tucked away, but you should see a opening. There it is. Now this place, this place is actually pretty long. Um, mostly imps and big boys, so you don't need to worry about having anything with holy going through this catacomb. Scroll my notes down some. Okay, so we're gonna hit the elevator. Um, just as a general rule of thumb, almost any time you go into a catacomb that has an elevator at the start, roll off the elevator before it gets to the bottom, and there's usually a, a, a glove work just waiting for you, like, almost every single time. Can't believe that missed. Okay. The this is the boss room. Can't do that just yet. Man, my dodges are not looking too good. So eventually we're gonna go, uh, we're gonna go down, down, but for now, just keep proceeding along like you would normally. Oh, we got a trap right here. You can try and lure. I really like using traps to bait. Oh my god! If only that trap had some bigger arrows. Probably have more more golden seeds and sacred tears by this point that I can use. So proceed through. Um, right here, we're gonna fight our first big boy. And you may remember some of these dudes from in Stormvale Castle. So these guys can be quite deadly. I like getting charged heavies while they're not paying attention. That'll open them up for a stagger. Uh, alternatively, you can try and circle backstab, and even though they're big, you can parry them, and I have not had that drop before, so let's take a look. Sea strength 24, oversized double-headed axe with a bizarre melted appearance. Cool. It's pretty, pretty 7.5. That's not too heavy either. I like. It's another fun thing, is almost every enemy in this game, uh, you can get their weapon to drop. We're gonna take these ones out since they're, uh... Oh no, this is bad. This is bad news bears. We're gonna drop my time and get a heal off. What hell thing? Actually, I think you can, you can parry, like, the punch or something. I don't know. We just need to kill this dude before we die. Okay, um, so... What was this? Oh, yeah. This, there's, there's a helmet behind here that's kind of weird-looking. Uh, Stat-wise, it's absolutely terrible. I haven't found any particular reason for the helmet. Maybe there's a, a hidden side quest in the game, but it's like a mirror helm. So your character looks like they're just wearing like a, a picture on top of their head with little mirrors all over it. Um, you know, if if you want to, uh, you want to do that, that's on you. I'm not picking it up because, like I said, terrible helmet, and I have found literally no use for it. Um, so with a rune arc, let's finally show y'all what a rune arc does. So when you have these, and later on you'll have a ton of these. You can also get them from doing co-op or invasions. But you go ahead and pop that. Boom. 
And what you've noticed is all of my stats have gone up across the board. Which is why I think that's one of the best great runes in the game. Because, I mean, I have more resistances, I have more attack damage on my stuff, I have more scaling on my spells, more health, more stamina, etc, etc, etc. It's just so good. Uh, so we're going to continue up. There's going to be a bunch of imps that we're going to have to fight. And you can see, now I'm killing them even faster because I got a little bit more in strength and a little bit more in dex. But keep in mind, when you die, you will lose the effect of the Great Ruin that you had active. So this isn't a permanent buff. You need to, to pop it every time you want to stay alive. Floor trap right here. And this is the scythe. Fantastic dexterity weapon. We found the wind scythe earlier, and that's more of a, a fake scythe. Regular scythe. Very solid choice for dexterity builds. Good reach, good bleed. Uh, you can hit stuff through shields when it's two-handed, like not not just like help break a shield like most weapons can when two-handed, outright you hurt stuff through its shields. Because there's so many weapons in this game, I'm probably gonna start just giving a, a brief like Five second rundown of whether or not I think something's worth using. Okay, so from that way, now I believe we do our drop downs. Let me look. Uh, M scythe, and then we drop down twice. So we're gonna drop here, and then I would suggest dropping from this portion just so the fall is lower. Ah, uh, he already saw me. Now there's a couple big boys down here, and we're gonna try and be sneaky, sneaky. Do 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 Prattling Pate. I don't know if we've gotten any of these until now, but these are- yeah, we have. These things are just- they're, they're goofy. Which, ironically enough, the Your Beautiful Prattling Pate is actually involved in, uh, the weird demigod person's side quest, the one that I said, like, we're not gonna bother covering him. Um, like, makes him happy, but you don't get anything from him. Which, I don't know. Maybe there is some secret hidden condition that I have not been made aware of. We have another one. Of course, there's another trap here. See, I'm big targets. They don't do well against that stuff. Uh, let's see. Two big boys, bunch of loot, another bigums, and one more guarding the page ashes. Ooh, page ashes are fun. After that, we got another weird cat. God, oh my God, I'm being bullied. Let me go. So the page ashes are definitely worth a, a quick mention. Um, they're a little bit more expensive, as you can see at 81. But the page is this really annoying spirit that has a piercing sword and a crossbow that can shoot explosive bolts. So in terms of uh, ranged spirits, at this point in the game, this would be your go-to choice. You want something that's just going to sit from rage and deal damage. Can't go wrong with that one. 
later on we, we uh, run into pages that have uh, the multi-shot crossbows, so... Man, they are terrifying, because these things roll up on you and they shoot like three explosive bolts out and your health just plummets. Grab that. And then we just run back this way. And um, I'm already a little low, so let's go ahead and just hit the... Well, no, it's the elevator. We'll just go on in. If I die, I just I respawn right here anyway. Uh, this is going to be another one of those cat statue things. We get the mercenary ashes for killing it. So this one has some sorcery stuff. Pretty easy to avoid, just dodge it. So Caden Sellsword, uh, decent choice. It's those big mercenary dudes that you fought a bunch in the front zone. Just looking around for any more root resin. I think it's just that one. But yeah, not not a bad choice. Um, they're tankier than a lot of the other summons we've we've seen until now. But I mean, honestly, if you're if you have the FP for a big summon at this point, you already got Oleg, which like Oleg, Oleg, real good. Uh, okay, so from here we. Get rid of that marker. Um, let me see. We turn to Highway North. Continue along the pathway. Mariner. Okay, let's let's finish up this zone. We're almost, well, not this whole zone, but we're almost through this portion of the zone. So we're gonna we're gonna push a little bit more. So right here, back at Highway North, uh, and instead of going that way, we are instead gonna continue up this way towards some stuff. So in particular, uh, let me see. There's a crab. There's a well, there's a starlight shard like over there ish. We have a mariner right around here. Uh, smithing three in the graveyard, and then a guy and some stuff. So let's yeah, let's go do that, and that way, this portion of Liernia is knocked out. Just the the, the bottom right facing cliff ledge of Liernia will be done. These zones are so massive; it's just ridiculous. One thing that's nice is I can actually take this off and go for, uh, for something that's a little more useful. Because right now I have the stat boost from my my rune arc, so I don't need to worry about the the source seal. So I've never it's it's a very uh, odd crab. It's just a crab in the forest here. Um, I didn't get anything from killing him. I even tried killing the crab as well as all the little baby crabs. Still didn't get anything. So, I don't know, maybe there's there's some hidden secret involving in that crab, but as I mentioned at the start, I'm sure people are going to discover stuff for probably years to come about this game. But we're going to grab that Starlight Shard, and then we're going to keep riding, and we have a Mariner coming up. These guys are, you know, y'all know the drill. These guys are pretty easy. The Beast I quivered because of the Mariner. Get some skeletal ashes from that. 
and another death root, of course. Uh, and then there were a couple things here in the graveyard we can snag up. Uh, what did I write in my notes? There should be smithing three, and what else? Smithing three and a Trinia Lily. There it is. All right, and then we're just going to continue heading north again. Uh, there's some dragonfly heads next to, like, this next mini graveyard we see. Uh, there is a dude right here, but this guy can probably kill you. So just for now, right on past him, we're going to get a, um, we're going to get another, another grace. And also another painting. This is the Lake, Lake Facing Cliffs Resurrection. Go on and pick that painting up. Rest at the grace. Right on out here and grab this. And then we're going to kill the knight. Uh, so this knight will drop the spell book that my faith people have probably been looking for. It drops lightning spear, uh, a crappy lightning bolt that isn't quite as good, and then electrify armament, which is really good. So... Definitely want to take this guy out. Uh, there's also a chance that you can get a shield to drop, which is a really solid shield. It's a great shield that doesn't have anything on it, which the reason that's so fantastic is you can take the great shield and you can put, uh, you, know, you can put like barricade on it. book uh, and from that we are we're done we have looped around and hit this whole little it's crazy to think how much stuff was packed just into this little area uh, yeah it's a lot of stuff uh, this by the way is the bridge that goes to the divine tower for the region you hit that up later but that's a it's a whole different slew of activities so we're not concerned about that for the time being but let's head over to the church we're gonna turn this in and then we're gonna make our way back to lake face and cliffs which is where we are going to wrap up. Obviously, you don't need to turn these in at any particular time, but just to, you know, talk about it because we have people that are doing faith builds. Uh, Lightning Spear, super, super good. This thing is fast, does high damage. Honestly, this is probably the best iteration of Lightning Spear we've seen since uh, pre-nerf Lightning Spear's Dark Souls 2. Uh, Honed Bolt, this thing is dookie. I... <laughs> I've tried this on a 60 faith incantation build and it's just crap. Electrify armament though, that's good. That's basically just like permanent lightning grease. So definitely some nice stuff for my paladin boys out there. Uh, but anyway, from here we are gonna head on back to Lake Facing Cliffs. Just to give an idea of what we have coming up in the next episode for tomorrow. Uh, we're going to be dropping down for another cave that's right here. Uh, after that, we're going to head on over and hit this. We're going to swing and try and hit all of the stuff that's out in the marsh. Do a little hidden village under here. Get some stuff that's on the cliff here. So there's going to be a lot. I'm going to try and fit all of that into one episode, but I'm not sure if we'll be able to. I mean, just, just looking at my notes, it's like a full page of notes, which... Today's episode was like half a page of notes, so it, it might end up being, um, it might be two episodes, but we'll see. Either way, more is coming your way, and I'll catch you all tomorrow with that.